And yo. We live, Chico. We live, we live, we live. Chico, we live. We live. Yeah, eat my bar to everyone. Eat my bar to everyone. Let me get my guest on the show for a chat. Hey. hey how are you? What's up? I'm good. I'm good. We're a bit late. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> how how's things? You looking you looking nice and glowing? Thank you. I'm in my garden. The weather's good, man. I'm in my sun trap in my garden, so That's you good. know. How's the family? Um, good one. Everyone's good. Everyone's good. Um, honestly, it's just been a long lockdown, man. And I know. Been, now I've been at my, I've been, you know, staying with my, my family. So this is probably the longest time I've stayed with my family in like 15 years. <laughs> so um, it's nice to be around family. Yeah, no, it's really nice. I think that's one of the positives of this whole thing is that obviously we get to appreciate, you know, the, the little things that maybe we take for granted. Yeah. Like family, spending time with family, just having a kick about with my brother, you know, little things, you know. So um, that's been the that's been the good side. But it is long. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting itchy feet now. I'm like, come on, <laughs> I want to be able to travel, and it's hard. It does get hard. It has got hard. I don't know about anyone else, but there's been a lot of ups and downs during this period. Have you been keeping fit? Have you been staying fit? And yeah, every day, every day, I've been training. That that's one of the things that. I think has been really important is been having a routine, training routine. So every morning I've been getting up, training, keeping my mind right, keeping my fitness regime up. Been doing. I don't know if you know him. Was Was London? Pardon? I don't know if you know um, Was London. No, no. Yeah, no. I've been doing um, like his sessions. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's been really good. Like um, high intensity, like hit sessions, basically. Okay. And I've been going for long runs and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's it's been all good. It's been all good. Yeah, that's good to hear. And Ola, I just wanted to take it back. Obviously, I know of you. For the people that don't know you and haven't watched women's football, just tell them a bit about yourself and a bit about your background and where you're coming from. Yeah, so I'm from Birmingham originally. Yeah. Um, so I'm a Brummy girl. You might not be able to tell by my accent, but I'm I was going to say I was from London. Like you ain't got <laughs> I've been in London a long time. Been in London yeah. a long time, but um, yeah, I'm from Birmingham, and obviously grew up playing. You know, playing in my local area, my local estate, with yeah. all the boys. Um, I was the only girl um, in my local estate, so yes. I, I kind of had to like figure it out with all the boys and. I realised pretty early on that I was very good, probably better than the boys, to be honest, running <laughs> rings around them. And, um, yeah, so I just, football was my, like, freedom. I just played outside, played on the estate, um, gave me a lot of confidence, and then I started playing in school as well um, for, the, for the boys' team. Um, and then when I got to the age of 12, um, then I got scouted for Birmingham City wow. and started playing for them. And... Um, yeah, it kind of got serious quite quickly. So obviously played for Birmingham, played, I always played up an age. Um, and then I scored, uh, I started like, um, I got recruited for England uh, when I was a teenager. And then the rest is really history. Once you get into the England setup, it's about staying in the setup um, as much as you can. And um, yeah, so that, that was what kind of made it serious for me. Yeah. Uh, and then I didn't really become pro until I was, um, I wouldn't, I didn't come, become pro until I was like 21. I went to America to play. Um, and then, yeah, it's just, uh, went to uni as well. Mm -hmm. So it's been a, it's been a really long journey. I, we, we probably don't have enough time to talk about my journey. It's been you a really long one, but. We've got enough time. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, so was you, you was born in um, Nigeria, right? Lagos. Yeah, yeah, so I'm Nigerian descent. Um, yeah, so British Nigerian. Um, and uh, yeah, very proud of my Nigerian background. Um, of both my parents are Nigerian. Um, my mom was very hard working when I was growing up. Um, she worked very hard. 
um, me and my, with me and my brother at the time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we've we've got got a lot of Nigerian values instilled. Where are you from? Me, I'm from Congo. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah. So you oh, speak yeah. French? Um, and my French is not the best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I want to be. I want to be able to speak French. French is a beautiful language. I can speak nice. a little bit of Italian. Can you? Yeah. Drop, drop, drop a little sentence for us. Drop a little sentence, okay. Uh, uh, ti piace Londra? I don't know what you said. Ti piace Londra is like, do you like London? Oh, yeah, no, of course, I love London. <laughs> yeah, and then I say, if I, if I want to say I like London, I say, mi piace Londra. Okay. I was going to say, I was going to say that, Anola, yeah? When you was playing football, you was also doing A-levels, if I'm, if I'm correct. Yeah. No, I was how was that? How was that for you trying to balance the two? Was it easy or was it like difficult? It was hard because obviously, as a female footballer, we don't really like growing up. I didn't have the security of of knowing that football could be my career because yeah. uh, women's football wasn't really professional growing up. So I had to really focus on on my education as much as possible to have a fallback to have a plan B. Yeah, of course. And um, you know, I did well in school, did well in my GCSEs, and then. When it started getting quite serious in terms of going pro, I was semi-pro at Charlton, mm. and then I, I decided to go to uni. So I went to Brunel, um, studied law, and um, that was hard because law is like law is hard. Do you know what I mean, there's no getting away from how hard law studying law is. But I just grinded it out because I knew that if I got through law and I had a qualification, it will help me in the future. Um, so I would always encourage anyone men or women to make sure that they're, they're trying to hone their skills as much as possible educate yourself make sure you're doing different things um so that you have so many different avenues to go down when you finish playing because football's a short career you know like yeah. you, most people retire at 35 mm. you know so you got to be able to say okay what does life look like after 35 i mean yeah. i'm free now but you know so maybe i retired a little bit early wow. but, you got to be able to, you know, you got to be able to plan, have different avenues, different lanes that you can go down. I think a lot of footballers make that mistake, um, specific, particularly in the men's game, because a lot there's a lot of money involved. But in the women's game, we, I, I wasn't able to do that because yeah. I didn't really start earning good contracts until later in my career. Okay, I was gonna say you said you said you're fair free now. You don't you don't look fair free. Ah, uh, do I look do I look younger? Yeah, you, of course okay. you look. I was gonna say like even like twenty fives. Okay, nice. That's the compliment of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Like, like I said, most people didn't know, but this was you were studying during the Euros, right? Yeah. So, um, so basically, when we had the home Euros back in two thousand and five, I believe, um, we like I was doing my A levels, and yeah. um, so what we did, we organised for me to take my A levels in Manchester which mm. was near um, the City Stadium where, yeah. the, where, where our game was. So I took my A-level history exam at like noon and then we had the game at think four o'clock. So I got a car yeah. from my exam, did my exam and then got a car to the game. Wow. Um, and thankfully the, the coach at the time, Hope Power, let me do that. But to be fair, during the exam, like, I couldn't think of anything else but the game and I flopped that exam. I got a D, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, yeah, well, whatever. I took it and uh, I did all my exams. So, how was it? How was it like um, your time at England? What was it like, like playing against all all sorts of different countries and that? I loved it. I loved it. Like, you know, to be honest with you, like getting one cap for England was a was a privilege. But to get one hundred and two, like over eleven years, like it's it's not something I expected at all. Um, especially for me as a Nigerian and someone who. You know, my brother played, choose, chose to play for Nigeria. So choosing to play for England was very much, you know, something that I was, it, was, it made me very proud. Um, and doing it for such a long time, scoring lots of goals, traveling the world, playing with people who are still my friends to this day, um, meant a lot to me. Meant yeah. a lot to me. Yeah. yeah. Growing up, growing up, like, during the time, you and your brother, was there competition? Who's better? Do you know what? Every, a lot of people ask me that, but there wasn't. There wasn't. Like, we supported each other, you know? Yeah. There was, we played, like, growing up in Birmingham, we both played out together. And yeah. Football was very much what bonded us. Mm. So, you know, 
No, we never competed at all. That's not really the family I come from. But what I would say is actually when we became pro, my brother was very helpful for me in terms of just understanding how to navigate the professional side of the game. Because um, there's a lot of dark sides to the professional side. When money is involved, contracts, like coaches that like when you're out of favour, when you're on the bench, like there's lots of things that, you know, my brother helped me to understand how to deal with it. So if anything, he was just a, it, it's a benefit for me to have a brother in the game, you know, that was on the other side of it. No, of course. Like you said, I know a lot of people touch up on this. Like, um, obviously, we, we know how important the men's game is. Like, with the women's football, do you think there could be a lot more done to help, like, the women's football? Do you know what? It's come a long way, you know. Like, yeah. it's come a long way. From when I started playing, I didn't have any role models to look up to on TV, literally. Like, yeah. the only black females I saw on TV doing sport were the Williams sisters. Yeah. That was it. And I didn't play their sport. So it was quite hard for me because I, I couldn't see what I could become. Mm. Now it's it's everywhere. Like if you want to watch women's football or if you want to watch a show about women's football, you can tune in different channels. I've got it. So I'm really proud of that, that, that tr progression. Obviously, there's still a long way to go in terms of, you know, just the, the equality in the game, um, you know, the, the financial support. But honestly, we've come a long way. Yeah. And... It's a bit like, you know, I was saying to someone the other day, you know, in terms of where the investment now is in women's football, if you put, if you put £10 down 10 years ago on a property, yeah, you bought a property for £10. And then in 10 years' time, that £10 became £10 million. That's what women's football, that's in terms of the investment women's football has, you know. Mm. Like, now it's drawing investment of £10 million sponsoring wow. the league. Whereas before, I was paying £10 to play. <laughs> Serious. You know I mean, so it, it's it's a it's a worthwhile investment because <laughs> now a lot of people want to see women empowered, want to see young girls playing, doing their thing, you know, being confident about who they are, yeah. you know, banging in goals. Like that's that's where that's the world we live in now. So I'm I'm always trying to say to people, particularly in my job now, like it's a worthwhile investment. It's worthwhile to 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 back women's football because in another ten years, it could be. Massive, absolutely massive. With that saying, I was just I was looking at your um goal scoring record as well. Like you know yeah. how to put in the back of right, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More than a whack. I was checking that and I was thinking, wow, how do you get how do you get an eye for goal? Was it just did it come natural to you or was your like you know, you was a what well, did wait, was your striker or a winger? I was uh both really. Most of my career I played number nine up front. Yeah. But um, for Chelsea, which was my, my, my club, really, that's the closest to my heart. I played on the wing for a few years, and some of my best years were on the wing as well. Mm. One thing that helped me a lot was my pace. Yeah. If you've got pace as a forward... You're gone. Like, you're gone. Like, defenders <laughs> can't really touch you, let's be honest. Like, you know, I didn't even really need skill that much because I was able to use my pace to get past defenders, and I could feel it sometimes. Defenders were so scared of me because I was so quick. Yeah. So, um, I feel I feel like my pace helped me a lot, and then obviously I used to work on my finishing a lot. Um, and don't get me wrong, I, I didn't always get it right. You know, yeah. there were times in my career when I used to when I when I missed chances, it used to get to my confidence, and oh. I didn't want to I didn't well, want to put I didn't want to put myself in a position to score. Mm. So, the life of a striker is up here as well. You know yeah. what I mean? If if you miss. It's like, oh, you know, I don't want to miss again. I don't want to yeah. fail again. Mm -hmm. But actually, to score, you have to kind of put yourself in those positions to score. So once I broke through that psychological bar barrier, yeah. I started scoring more goals. Like they say, um, if you're not in them positions, getting them chances, then you're not doing something right. But at least if you're getting the chances and you're in the positions... Exactly, exactly. And, that, and that, if, you're, if you do any coaching or any coaches out there, mm. that's, that's what you've got. Like, for any attacking players, you've got to coach them that, like... Don't knock players for, for not scoring. I remember coaches that used to like be like, oh, like, why did you miss? And, and I'd feel like that hasn't helped me because actually you should be telling me to keep getting in that position and eventually it will go in. Um, so it's psychological as well. With that, with that saying, it was like you became one of the first women to, you know, come on um, Match of the Day. How was that? How was that for you? Yeah, it was scary. It was scary because obviously when you put yourself out there as the first, 
Yeah. It's, um, you, you, you've got a target on your back, you know? But all I could focus on in that moment was, okay, I've got the opportunity to be the first to do this. And I've got the opportunity to open the door for other women who want to do this. So I, the only thing I could do was be the most prepared person on that panel of guys. Yeah. So I researched all the goals, all the players, all the teams. And so when I went on the show, I, was, I had all this just knowledge in the back of my head and I just chatted as if I'm chatting to you now. And that really helped me a lot. So the lesson for me from that, from that match of the day experience was just always be prepared. Yeah. And don't shirk the opportunity to be the first. Yeah, of course. Because if you do it well, the doors that can open. And now, I mean, I don't know how I mean, I think it's 2008. So 12 years since that first appearance. Now it's standard to see women mm. on, sh on shows. Yeah. But, you know, I'm not taking credit for that. I'm just saying if somebody wasn't the first to do it, it wouldn't have happened. Do you know what I mean? So I always try and find opportunities if I can to be the first to do something. Okay. No, don't say, don't say you're not taking credit. We're giving you credit for that. <laughs> I, I, I love that. You're too kind. You're too kind. That. Thank I, you. I love that. Cause just, just the way you are, just the way you are now. And when I see you on TV, I, I love all that, man. Sometimes, mm -hmm. Be like you know what be yourself and you are yourself and just me speaking to you i uh, listen uh like i've met a lot of people me speaking to you now like it's just you're you're inspiring me ah oh, so, um, i i appreciate yeah, that i'm uh, like i used to play football myself i still play football now but that's the level i want to get to as well like you know doing tv going on tv talking about football like it's inspiring to see two and you me. can you can you can do you know what there's one thing that's great about now is that there's so many different platforms now where you can create whatever you want. You know what I mean? If you want to create a show about football, create it. Like, yeah. you see all these shows like Arsenal TV, mm. you know, you see, I mean, I'm not an Arsenal fan, but I, I respect what they've done in terms of bringing a different voice to the conversation. Yeah. Um, so I think now content creation creating platforms for you to, to have your own voice is there's not, there's no better opportunity to do it. So if that's what you want to do, I mean, I had to do it through obviously traditional shows. Yeah. If I wanted to, if I had a dream now to start a show about men's football, I could, if, yeah. if, I, if I put my mind to it, you know, I think we're living in a really creative time mm. and um, there's no real barrier to, to what you want to do. We, we create our own barriers, you know, that's good, that's good. Talk to me, talk to me about your time at um, Juventus. Boy, well, I'll tell you about the first day. So <laughs> the first day, first of all, I signed for them. At, yeah. so, so I, they announced my signing a day after Ronaldo. Yeah. Wow. So it was like, wow, like a whirlwind when mm -hmm. I got there. So I felt like I was literally playing, like signing for the biggest club in the world because obviously Ronaldo had just joined. Yeah. That was mad because it was just all like you know, like press everywhere, whatever. Then I get to the medical center and we had to do the medical. So obviously every player that signs, you have to do like a medical, like a heart screening all that. And I'm thinking, oh, it's gonna be routine. When I say it was the hardest thing I've ever done, just the test, just that test on the first day. I started thinking to myself, what have I got myself into? <laughs> they put like, they put like lots of different wires on me. I had to wear a mask to run. It was, it was hard. And I had to like run for like X amount of time. I think it was like 20 minutes nonstop. And then they wow. kept pushing the, they kept pushing the buttons on the treadmill to get, to get, oh, I just remember that first day <laughs> thinking I'm not going to survive this. Um, so that was, so, so in terms of Leventus, Juventus, one of the things that I loved about it was that I'm probably the fittest I've ever been in my career. Yes. At, at event because they were just so on it in terms of like sports science, mm. nutrition, training, like you, you just, it was just high level. Um, and, you know, at 32, I was probably fitter than I was at 25. Wow. Um, so I, I, I did love that because it was very challenging for me and I needed that challenge. And then obviously, then obviously the language was hard as well. Yeah, of course. I was gonna, I was gonna say that. What was it like when you went there? Like obviously... someone's put, someone's put. I'm struggling to run to the corner shop. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was gonna say, obviously, big culture change for you. Obviously, 
guy in um, Italy playing for Juventus. What was it like? How did it like? How long did it take you to settle in? Oh, that's a good question. It took me a while, you know, because I, I I felt like because of the language barrier, I was never really kind of accepted in the in the Italian group, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I felt like the language barrier is quite hard oh. because you want to be in the banter. You want to, yeah. you know, at Chelsea, I was I was always in the banter. I've got good friends. Like I love that side of it, but. I couldn't really get into the banter of the team because I didn't really understand what they were saying. And I tried as quickly as possible to learn, but sometimes it just does take time. You can't just learn a new language overnight. So it took me probably about six months to really feel like I could have a conversation or get my point across or understand the tactical meetings, for example. Um, but, you know, they say, they say um, football is a universal language. You know, when it came to on the pitch... I was fine because I knew what I needed to do. It yeah. was more it was more off the pitch really that was quite hard. But that's what that's what I wanted. I wanted to kind of be out of my comfort zone. Yeah, of course. And and see how I see how I managed with 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 not not like feeling quite vulnerable, you know, <laughs> not not understanding the language. Like even just getting in a taxi and saying where to go, that that was hard. Or, or ordering a pizza, you know. <laughs> um but it was good. It, it's it's really it really helped me to mature a lot and and grow. What was the city like? What was the lifestyle over there like? Do you know what? To be honest with you, and I can say this now after I've left Turin, where Juventus obviously is based, it wasn't my favorite place. Yeah. I I I'm a city. I like the city. I like kind of. Um, I like you know I like lots of things to do and and it, it was quite boring. I didn't really. I didn't really find a lot of things to do. What I did like was traveling around Italy. Mm. So I went to Rome, I went to Florence, uh, Verona, like there's lots of beautiful places in Italy. But the actual city, I didn't, I didn't really connect with that much. I missed London quite a lot. Okay, no, it's understandable. I can, I can imagine. We're saying that, let's take it away from football now. Like, what do you like doing when you're not playing? Days and that when you know when you're on your football break and that what what do you like doing? What do you like doing? Hobbies and stuff like that. Yeah, um I really like travelling. So I like yeah. to travel. Um and in particular I'm 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 trying to travel around Africa as much as I can. So whenever I've got a chance I travel to Africa. So okay. so far I've been to Ghana, Uganda, Kenya, obviously Nigeria, um, South Africa. Wow. So I've got Botswana next on my list, Morocco. Like I want to do a lot of Africa because um, mm. I feel I feel like Africa is good for the soul. Um, so I really love traveling. I love um, I love the arts. So I love music. Uh, obviously, that's your thing. Yes. Uh, I love yeah. I love live music. I love music. I don't know if you saw the um, the Beanie Man and um, yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I was locked in. I was locked in. I was locked in. Right. Yeah, I had I had the best time in my bed just listening to Lashley. Um, what else I like I like um, I like art quite a lot. Like going to art galleries, anything entertainment really. Obviously football games. Yeah, I, I quite I, I like a lot of things. Um, I'm a bit of a foodie. I like going to nice restaurants. Oh, that's like me. I I love it. Yeah. I, I love, yeah. I, I love food. So you said you said you was tuned in yesterday. So was you dancing in, in your bed? How can you not? <laughs> when uh, when Zagaza Zagaza <laughs> listen, I was because you know what the, those those um those clashes really yeah. bring it bring it bring, bring it back for you. Do you know what I mean in terms of all the music you used to listen to? Like I, I, used, to, I used to listen to um I watched the um Jill Jill Scott and Erica Badu one the other day as well. I, I and it just reminded me of my it reminded me of my my sort of my early years listening to music in the 90s um so yeah i love those clashes i think it's great no i loved it yesterday when i i i even actually watch it today again in the morning i just i woke up and i watched it again it was just such a vibe and you know like what you're saying with the tunes they just brought back so many memories so many memories and the culture it's good for the culture as well to just remember like you know jamaican bashman you know that all that music was what we grew up with yeah. you know um 
yeah i loved it I, I loved it it's just it's just a nice vibe nice vibe and obviously seeing all the comments as well it's funny seeing all the all the famous people in the comments as well enjoying it like you are <laughs> i just wanted i just wanted to ask you obviously football we know you're good with your feet and that but can you shaku on the beat can i shaku on the beat yeah I can check you on the beat, but not <laughs> well, not as good as like Whiz Kid and that, you know. I well, don't want to embarrass myself. Got a little like, okay. What well, in a in a club? Just say if you're going to a party or f family function, are you more of a two step or you get into it? I, I I'm I, I'm not definitely not a two stepper. Yeah. But I'm not someone who's going to be in the centre you know, with a with a circle around me. I'm more of a. I'm I'm more of a person that's gonna like shock out with my friend that I'm comfortable with, kind of thing. Oh. <laughs> hey, now you see, you see me. I'm more of a middle of the dance. I'll, when when it's time to dance, I'll go in. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. You're not you're not one of them guys that stands on the wall all day. No, all day. I, I forget that. That's I've, good. That's good. Forget that. I've come to enjoy myself. I'm in the middle of the dance. I'm saying to my boy, "Listen, hold my drink. Let me show you how it's done." That's me. <laughs> okay. So with that as well, what's um? Are you big on fashion or you don't really? You, you don't really. Oh, I love fashion. Yeah. Love fashion. Love fashion. I love um, expressing my personality through through um through what I wear. Mm -hmm. Um, and it varies. Obviously, I like a nice suit. Yeah. Um, versus I like being in like a tracksuit like I am now. I'm in this like, if you can see, I'm in this like two piece. Tracksuit that I got going on. I'm really into tracksuits at the moment. Hey, okay. Because, um, you know, let lockdown. Know, let, them know. let them know where's the tracking from. Let them know. The tra Do you know what? I bought this tracksuit in, in, in South Africa. So I, don't, I, couldn't even yes. tell, I couldn't even tell you where it's from. It was some street place in at South Africa. Mm. Um, uh, someone said, has she been to Spat Nation? No, I have not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> rebuke it. Um <laughs> So yeah, fashion for me, fashion for me is um, it's really it's really important. I love I love what a lot of the African designers are doing um, in terms of bringing African influence to fashion. Mm. Um, you know, yeah, I, lo I love I love where fashion is going at the moment. A lot of a lot of black designers as well in terms of like Virgil Abloh, yeah. you know, influencing mainstream fashion, like Louis Vuitton, and so what fashion is at the moment. No, I, I like I like um, his stuff as well. Off white, I got um, a couple of joints from Off white. I like I like I like his stuff still. Who, who what from um, Off white? Yeah. Not cheap though. No, expensive. That's what I'm saying. It's not. It's not, it's not that them things there. You know, like, them things there is, is not every week or every month thing. It's just. It's a it's a one off a bit two pieces max thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, of cool. course. So you're um you're saying where's where's the next place you're traveling to? Your next stop? You know what? I'm trying to not think about it because it's a bit of a tease, obviously, mm -hmm. not being able to know when we travel because of lockdown. But I'm trying to like plan ahead and maybe go somewhere in August or September. Um I, I wanna go to um Philippines. I feel like the Philippines is somewhere that people probably don't know about, mm -hmm. but is a really nice holiday. Um, Botswana in Africa is like meant to be really nice, really good safaris there. Uh, what else is on my list? I think, to be honest, because we've been locked down for so much, anyway, I think, I think a party holiday would be nice for Mykonos or Ibiza, mm, mm, mm. you know, something like that. We'll see. I want to I I go, you know, where I want to go. I've seen a couple of my friends go there and a couple of people. I want to go Bali. I heard Bali is very nice. Bali. I went to Bali in 2016. Listen, one of the best places I've ever been. If you can go, go. Yeah. Beautiful place. No, look, look at the way the sun is just kissing your face. It's even looking. Hey! Say that again, sorry. The sun. The sun just kissing your face. The glow is... Yeah, so my, my garden's like a sun trap. So, <laughs> yeah. Someone said, someone's talking about my book. Thank you for, for bigging up my book. They don't teach this. You can get it on Amazon, guys. Check yeah. it out. Tell, tell them a bit about that, actually. Tell them, tell them people that's in on the live a bit about your book. 
Yeah, so my book's called um, They Don't Teach This. Mm. And um, basically, it's a life memoir about the things in my life that I've learned uh, through football that no one really taught me. You know, I had to kind of figure it out on my own and figure it out through mm. experience. So it's all about experience. You know, there's no manual to life. You got to try and you know. You got to fail. You got to succeed and figure it out as you go along. You'll make mistakes. You know, lots of mistakes I've made. Lots of things I've done wrong. Mm -hmm. But if you're humble enough to take those lessons from everything you go through, then you'll always get better. So, that's the kind of premise of the book. Um, and yeah, it's on Amazon. There's also an audio book. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can hear me talking to you for like hours. No, that's um, good. Talking, talking through the book. Thank you, Jay. My friend Jay is saying it's an incredible read. Thank you. Appreciate it. No, we appreciate um, That's big. Everything, listen, everything you're doing, Anola, like, it's inspirational, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, I don't always get it right, you know, mm. but I, I always start from a, from a place of trying to be positive and inspire people and, and talk, talk positivity into people's lives. There's too much, there's too much negativity. There's too many people that um, don't know how to express positivity to other people, so I try to do that as much as I can. No, thank you. Obviously, we've been locked down for a long time. Like, what are you looking forward to? I know you're saying the travelling, not on the travelling side, but back on the TV and just watch football and all these things. Yeah, I'm missing football, man, not going to yeah. lie. I'm missing football um, a lot, actually. Um but yeah, I just started a new job. I started a job as a sporting director at, at Aston Villa. Wow! So I'm I'm kind of getting around, getting getting into that, loving loving that. Um, it's a really, really good opportunity for me to kind of put my legal skills and my managing skills and stuff to to work. So really enjoying that, working in football um, on the on the business side. And I think just off the pitch, really, just yeah, like you said, just kind of looking forward to. Um, traveling, seeing my friends. I haven't seen some of my friends in a long time. I'm yeah. missing them. Um, what else? Yeah, just kind of football coming back as much as possible. I mean, I don't know what football's going to look like in terms of actually fans being able to go to a game. Um, it might be a while before that happens, and that's quite sad because the fans are what make football what it is, you know? Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, I think I think that the mentality towards the future is just kind of like letting go of 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 needing to know what's going to happen. Okay. You know, I think for for, for those of us that are control freaks, um, <laughs> sometimes we've got to let go. Mm. You know, because if you let it go, then really you just operate in the now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I, I've had to work on that. Like I don't I don't have to know what's going to happen in two months. Mm. Just control what's happening now, be happy and peaceful now, and, and the rest will kind of take care of itself, you know? No, th thank you for this. And uh, I just want to congratulate you on, uh, on the villa situation as well. You I appreciate did. that. Thank you. Love it. Like I said, again, I won't stop saying it. Like, to all the young people, even male or female out there, like your inspiration. And I just want, I just want people to read your book and see, like, see your story and let them know that Listen, no matter Listen, what... Listen, the, the, the book... the book, Yeah, the, the book... um, The book is great, but you know what? It, it, it was... It, not everything in my life has happened in the book either, you know? There's so much that has gone on since the since I released the book in August. Yeah. I could probably write another book. um, But, yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I'm sure you inspire lots of people that you... You know, that, that you touch as well through yeah. what, you, what you're doing. You know, we're all kind of... We're all we can all be a light to whoever we we deal with, you know. It doesn't have yeah. to be. I think there's a lot of that sometimes in our culture as well. Like it's like, oh, that person's like up there on a pedestal, so that they have to be perfect. And 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 when you make a mistake, that's when everybody wants to cancel you. And it's yeah, like, no, cool. we can all be, we can all be influences and positive influences to whoever we touch, whether that's our mom, our, our brother, our sister, our friends. Um, so. You know, I'm just trying to do the best by me and by what I believe in and, and by what, you know, my culture and my people and um, and I'm sure you're doing the same. No, thank you so much for this. And I see people in the comments saying... Um, no, thank you for all the positive comments. 
they want to they want to hear your best eleven people you played with. My best eleven. Mm. This always gets controversial, you know, because you really, <laughs> if you leave certain people out, they get back, they get so upset. Like, why do you put me? Well, I'll, I'll give it a go. So, um, okay, goalkeeper. Uh, I'll go with Karen Barsley, who used to play, who plays for Man City. Yeah. She she she's probably the best goalkeeper I've played with. Right back, a girl called Lucy Bronze, who um, is the best player in the world. Um, I think she I think she recently won the Ballon d'Or. Wow. Or has at least got nominated for Ballon d'Or for the, for the last three years. Like she's she's a powerhouse. Centre back, um, player called Anita Asante. Ghanaian, Ghanaian, mm. Ghanaian descent. She was always, she's a bit like Virgil van Dijk, like calm, nothing oh. phases her, you know? Mm. Uh, other centre back, Casey Stoney, who plays for um, Man United, well, she's now the head coach of Man United, but I played with her for many years. Yeah. Left back, my friend Claire Rafferty, uh, great player, um, good friend of mine as well. Um, midfield, I'm going to go for midfield three of. Karen Carney, uh, Jill Scott plays for Man City, and Fran Kirby, mm. who's the number ten for Chelsea. He plays for Chelsea now. Probably one of the best players I've ever played with. Um, skill, a bit like Messi, yeah. like you know, just little little skills and great. Yeah, mm. I mean, never got that's what four that's four three and then another three yeah. um, up front. Definitely Kelly Smith, who's probably the best English player of all time. Okay. Um, you heard of her? Yeah. Kelly Smith. And then another woman called Marianne Spacey, who, when I was growing up, coming up, she was like a finisher, like just one of the best strikers, and I really looked up to her. And I think I've got one more left, haven't I? One more. Uh, all right, let's go on the left, Rachel Yankee. You know Rachel Yankee? Arsenal. Yeah, she played for Arsenal. Legend. She played yeah. for Arsenal for years. Um, so yeah, that's my eleven, and then me on the bench. Yeah. <laughs> no, what a team! Thank you so much for this chat. Nah, you're welcome. Thank you for bringing me on your platform. This won't be the last chat. Hopefully, I'll see you again, or hopefully, I even see you on Sky Sports or on the TV show one day. Yeah, when when I'm on Sky Sports, I'll I like wink to you, yeah, <laughs> wink, and then you'll know it's for you. <laughs> no, thank you, so much. thank you so much for this chat, man. I'll You're welcome. You. I hope all goes well for you, man. You deserve you everything. You too. You too. Thank you. Good luck Take and care. everything. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye.